Look, oh, look at them all. Whoa! Chrome steelhead or chrome coho. And this one would be a fish that's getting ready to spawn. Which one is the chanterelle? There's another one and another one. It's like just super delicate. Good morning, everyone. Finally, and I mean finally, Rodney and I are putting together our first formal foraging video. Uh, you know, the other one that I did was very casual, I would say, and that's what I was hoping it to be. But in this video, I want to take Rodney out. Chantrell picking. And I want to uh, show him how it's done. So have you ever been chantrell picking? I've done that with you once, but that's pretty much the only mushroom experience I've ever had. So I'm excited, never done it before. Um, in fact, I've actually done quite a bit of schooling on mycology and dendrology back at UBC. But that's everything that was on books. I'd never been out in the field doing this kind of stuff. So you know way more than me when it comes to this. Okay, so if I apparently know way more, and you know, like I don't have the schooling, um, I just have experiences that I rely on. That's where I get my knowledge from. So if you have any questions, I will be firing questions to you. Oh gosh, you're gonna put this teacher to the test. Okay, so it is late October, and unfortunately, this has been one of the first years where we have experienced a real cold snap. And I mean, we were getting snow that was, uh, I guess, falling just over and under the 1,000 meter range. So when snow falls and the ground freezes, that usually means it's the end of mushroom season. So right now what we're doing is we're at a much lower elevation and we're going to look for some golden chanterelles today. Uh, I've kind of scanned the hill. As you can see, I've already started picking some they're not in bad shape, but I'm hoping that we can find better. It's kind of frustrating to be honest, because I'm not finding the quality that I'm used to seeing. Here's one that's nice, decent. That's a better chanterelle. That's what I want to find. Nice button. But a lot of them are just like so waterlogged or all flowers. And I'm trying to find those solid, hefty buttons. First cluster of three. Hack them all down. Where are you? Oh, okay. So while we were walking along the path, I was telling Rod to be careful because there was a lot of buttons around and I didn't want him to step on them. So right in front of me or beside me, I have a couple of chanterelle buttons. So I have two buttons here. Okay, here's one chanterelle button. And this is also a chanterelle button. And you can see that the size does not matter. So how a button looks um, is that the cap is quite thick and it's curled over. So they both are curled over on each of the mushrooms. Whereas an older mushroom, or think of it as like a mushroom that's spawning, like a, a dirty fish spawner, the caps would be quite thin and flowered out. So this one would be considered like a spawner, again, in fish terms. It's, it's more mature, um, it's at the end of its life, and pretty soon it will be sporing. This one here is the mushroom that we are looking to, to find today. We want buttons. We do not really want the, the older ones. I mean, like, you can still eat this, no problem, but it's just not ideal compared to the buttons. And, and two, the buttons usually are in nicer shape, whereas this one, there's a lot more dirt on it. And this one looks pretty waterlogged, to be honest. Like, if I was to squeeze it, uh, a lot of water would pour out. So when you're IDing a chanterelle, there's a couple of key characteristics to look for. The golden chanterelle is a golden color or uh, orange. And it has ridges under the cap and there are no gills. And then the cap is quite dense and it has more of like 
a funnel shape or like a vase shape going up, so like kind of narrower at the bottom and then wider at the top. And also too, like the caps are usually quite bumpy or uneven. And apparently it smells like apricot. I don't eat apricots, but it does have a fruitier scent. So, are you ready? Yeah. So, one's a chanterelle and one's not. But aren't they so similar? If you have never seen it? Yeah. Okay, so that's a chanterelle. That's not. The, so this is exactly what I was talking about. The chanterelle has the ridges underneath, and on, on the, this one, you kind of can see it. The ridges start to make their way down the stem, whereas this one is, has gills, and when I brush them, you actually can see them moving. Like, think of a, the gills on a fish. So it's gilled, and the gills stop on the stem. They do not travel down it. Honeys. Growing on this. Look, oh, look at them all. Whoa! They're everywhere. Honey mushrooms, they, dec they grow on decaying, decaying trees. Here we have an alder, and uh, you can see the clusters all the way down to the bottom where we have the mother cluster, which is pretty cool. These ones look like they're in mint condition. They just, they have a, like the, the stems are, are solid. The veils underneath haven't broken. Like, so this one's a more mature one. It's not bad, but you can see here like, so this one, the, the veil has not broken away from the cap, whereas this one has. And it has a little uh, veil or skirt on the stem. Honeys too, they have the uh, kind of textured caps, hairy looking caps. I, I've seen it out in the bush quite a bit, but I've never taken it home to eat. But it's pretty neat, like the formation, how they just grow out from like, kind of the, the part of the, like the wound of the tree and they're all clustered together. Like that's, they're all stuck. And I bet you if you pulled this off, it'd be the same thing where you'd have big clumps. But I don't want to damage any of them. This one's good enough to show. This is a lobster mushroom, or a couple of them. The pieces are all scattered here. I broke a few, a few more off. But this one, it's uh, an earlier fall mushroom and lobsters are edible. You, this isn't a very good way to ID one, but the bright red colors, they have like a more grainier texture. Uh, the ridges too, like the chanterelles, no gills, and they have a strong scent of seafood, lobster, hence the name. Putting Rod to work, now he gets to pick some chanterelles. There we go. Oh, oh no. I hit the stick and it catapulted the mushrooms. Oh no. Dan, look at the patch you just found. One of the species that typically comes out late fall and early winter is the winter chanterelle. Or the nickname uh, foragers refer to them as is tubies. So here is a winter chanterelle. It has the ridges like our golden and our whites, but the stem is hollow. Angel wing mushroom. I couldn't remember if it was one species or another, so I typed in one of them and it pulled up angel wings. You can see like the dips in the caps. Same thing here, growing in clusters. 
I was telling you earlier that lobsters were a mushroom that I didn't really know how to find. And I remember telling you too that they're something that comes out like more of a summer, early fall mushroom. And like, we're right by the highway and I'm walking back to the car with Rod and there's like, I, I don't know, at least a half a dozen here poking up along the side. But like, look at that. And there's another one, like look at these guys. Like they haven't even, I bet you that's one right there too. And look at all down there. There's another one and another one. Look. Thank you so much everyone. If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for more behind the scene content on hiking, foraging, or fishing, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Kitty Canhoffin.